In this video, we're going to try and fit the monster truck into my tiny workshop, and we have some modifications. So we got a few problems with the monster truck. The rear steering seemed a little bit on the slow side, so it made it take a long time for it to centre up again, and made it a little bit unpredictable coming in at jumps. So we're going to fit a more powerful rear steering pump. We've got a bent rear steering arm. On the rear suspension, we've got these limit straps to limit the suspension travel to stop the piston in the shocks coming off on full travel. Trouble is, they're not long enough. <laughs> Also, just had my spare parts turned up, so we've got to sort all these out too. So in this container here, we've got some spare planetaries. So all my axles are actually, everything's all custom. But the only part that's left that comes from an old crane is the actual planetary itself. But in order to buy that, you've got to buy all this old stuff that comes off of an old crane. But we can use these as spares if we do break something, and then we can just bolt it on just to get us out of the trouble. Got a set of brand new shocks. Exactly the same ones, just spare ones. My new wheels are finally turned up, and we've got six of them so we can get the new tyres put onto those. So we used the BKT tyres in the last show. Trouble is with these, because they're race tyres, they're lightweight and they can puncture relatively easily. Luckily, they survived. And then here we've got a few more spares, bearings, rear steer parts, shock parts, nuts and bolts. No idea what's in there. Just a load of foam, probably a spindle. Complete rear diff, steering rams, falling bars. We've got a spare steering arm that we bent. Probably going to try and straighten that one though. Got the longer limit straps, sway bars, shock shafts and drive shafts. Next, we've got to get these wheels, make sure that they fit onto the truck. The same problem that we had with these wheels, we don't know if these ones have got the same problem. We've got a bigger weld on the inside here. We don't know if that is going to interfere with this. It's tight with a tape measure. So let's get this wheel off. One of those on. So apparently Monster Jam do grind a little bit off of here. How's it looking? Well, well. It's got to go on more, hasn't it? Yeah. You can see it there, look, it's sitting on the weld. Oh, guys, we messed about with it and they're not going to fit, so. I was going to take the wheels off and then grind all this stuff off around here, but it's, I think there's quite a lot we've got to take off. I mean, if we grind it down to about there, that's going to give us enough room to get everything on, but that's a lot of grinding. So Ian said we were better off just to take all the hubs off. Then we send them off to a machine shop. They can stick them on a lathe and do it all nice and cleanly, all professional looking, no grinding dust everywhere. Happy days. But it does mean we do have to take it all off. <laughs> right, you know that big bucket of stuff that we had here, all that greasy stuff? A friend of mine just picked them up. He's got an idea how to best clean them. We're going to go through them, get the parts that we need. Look at that. That's what you call a steaming heap of... Oh my god, look at this mess. You got it. Get this junk out of here. Don't have all that. That is minging. So next we're gonna steam clean them, then shot blast them, and then a little bit of paint on there. So this here is a spindle like you would find on a defender, like Andy the Landy. And here it is, next to your monster truck one. Oh, great, our funk bloke won't be happy with you. <laughs> How dare you! All right, so it's been a few weeks of procrastination. We was going to get the, the hubs machined. I had a lathe person come over, have a look, and he said the amount of work to take it all off, transport it, lift it onto a lathe, bring it all back again. He said, just get some of these special grinding discs and it will be easier. So I've got some of these 40 grit flap wheels or whatever they're called. Apparently these are really going to take it off quick. Also, we've got some other ones here, 24 grit and also some 16 grits. Now these ones here, these look nasty. I mean, if that's not going to get that metal off quick, then nothing will. So we've got to jack it up, get the wheels off, get grinding. Hopefully it's going to fit. Got Claire Neal in the house as well. Oh look, he's bought in merch. If you want some. Oh, I'll give it yeah. Link down below. That's it, link down below. The pain in the butt is, because this truck's got diff lockers, we're going to have to be able to turn these wheels round so we can grind all the way around the hub. Trouble is, with diff locks, it's locked up and it's not unlocking. So we've got to jack up the front as well, put the whole truck on axle stands so we can turn this and then it's all going to turn. 
That's the plan anyway. So this is where our problem is. This is too tall, so we have to grind this down as much as is sort of safe. And then we have to grind on a bigger chamfer, but also we cannot grind away too much of this because the wheel actually sits on this. And if this is gone, the wheel's gonna bend into there. So I think we keep about three millimeters on there. Hopefully it's gonna be all right. So next, we're gonna get these studs out of here. Oh, gold. Now, when we grind, we're not going to grind into these studs. So next, we've got to turn it so we can get to these ones. So go on, give them a spin. Oh. oh. Is, it in, is it in park? You said it's not. Well, it's definitely neutral. The problem probably is... You broke it. Let's spin the old pop shaft around by hand. Is that going to turn it? Oh, yeah, that's moving it. Yes, she's moving. Right, so that wheel there is moving as well. So maybe if I give a helping push on this one. Does that help? Nope. Any of you monster trucking people, let me know in the comments. How do you move it? But what if you turn it on the actual brake rotor itself? I think it'd be easier. Yeah, look at that, easy. I'll tell you what, you want Bolton while I'm spinning it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, where's the other dagger? So I'm going to go for my weapon of choice, the 16 grit, and Ian's going to go for the... There's Ian's weapon. Let's try Ian's weapon. I think I'll take more. You're getting way more sparks off of that one. About an hour later, we've tried different discs. We've actually gone to this one now, just a normal grinding stone. And that one seems to get it off the best, not the most off. And then we go over after it with this one to clean it all up. But so far, look, that's what it's gonna look like. Right, so that is one done. It's probably taken, I don't know, in how many hours? I think one's four. Four hours on, on one each. Yep. So we've got to get these studs back in, see if the wheel fits. And then if it does, same again on the front. Hopefully it's going to go on. If it doesn't go on there now, God knows. Yeah. Looks like could be maybe good. So I got it off again. We put a little bit of spray paint around here so we can see where it's touching. It did touch on the hub one spot there which is good that there's not so good because that means it's sitting on the weld there's good but then if we look inside the wheel that's what you want to see sitting on the flange but then there's a couple of bits there look where it's taking it off from the weld so i think what we're gonna have to do get a grinder and just grind a tiny little bit off of these welds off and then we should be good to go it is next week and we've got to carry on with this nonsense no idea why they don't just make him like this it's completely beyond me but anyway we've got to grind more off it's still hitting on the weld so we're gonna grind it from that edge there to that edge there should give us a little bit more room been on this for more hours now this is about as much as we can take off we cannot grind more of this off there's gonna be nothing left for the wheel to sit on so we've chamfered this all the way back to that edge there we sprayed it again same as last time and it's still touching in a few places look there we're touching there we're touching there we're touching guys i do not understand why this is so difficult i mean the hubs are aftermarket the wheels are aftermarket why can't it just be made to fit monster jam have to grind it down as well it's like every team just have to get this stuff and then spend hours and hours and hours grinding it all off. Why can't I just make it already laved off? It just seems stupid. So now we're going to have to take off a little bit off this weld on here as well. I don't know what else we can do. Because if it sits on the weld and you buddy it all up, you can end up cracking the hub. Hopefully now it's going to fit. It's like day number three days of grinding. Finally, we've got all the hubs done. And now I'm busy grinding this weld down. But anyway, we're going to try and straighten this bent bar on the back here. So we've put the bent to the bottom and we've got the jack under it. So now we're going to jack it up and hopefully it's straightened out. Maybe. Keep going. Keep going. More. More, more, way more. Just, just pump her up. <laughs> Give it a little bit more just for luck. A bit more for luck. Look at that bow in there. 
Oh. A bit straighter than it was. So the wheels are all done. So next we've got to get them shipped away, get the tyres fitted, get them painted. And here we've got all the planetary hubs back. They've been shot blasted and painted. So now I've got to take them out, flip them over and get the actual planetary assembly out of the hubs. When we jet washed them and everything, some water did get in. So we want to get it all out, get it cleaned up, make sure that none of it goes rusty. The planetary is this piece that sits in here. We've got to keep them as spares. So here I'll just put some tape over the top of it to stop all the sandblasting stuff and water and everything else hopefully none of that got inside the actual hub so when we steam cleaned it we did get a little bit of water in there by the way if you don't know what shot blasting is basically it's sort of like these sand granules and they come out of a gun and they really hit it really fast and it blasts all the paint and rust off Let's get the planetary out of the hub. Now to get the cover off, it's got another hole here that you put the screw into. And then if you gun it up, I think it's supposed to lift that cover off. So the reason that I had to buy all of this stuff is just to get this and this. Everything else is all aftermarket. The hub, this piece here, aftermarket. The knuckle, aftermarket. Spindle, aftermarket. Champagne, aftermarket. All the insides, all aftermarket. So hopefully someone is going to make this and this so we don't have to buy all of it every time and mess around painting it, cleaning it, all that. But anyway, if we turn this upside down, we can see how the planetary gearbox works. No idea what it's all called, but these gears spin round. They latch into that, and that's what turns this. That's what drives the hub, and then that is what drives the wheel. There's about a three to one reduction on there. Spares department is getting a little bit fuller. Next, we've got to give it faster rear steering. So here we've got the rear steering pump. Here's the motor. Here we've got a faster motor. The thing is, I have no idea how it's supposed to be held on. So we're going to find out in a minute, hopefully. And also a bigger hydraulic tank. All right, let me show you how slow it is. <laughs> Trouble is, with that slow steering, it makes it unpredictable. When you're coming around the bend and you let go of the rear steer, you try to line it up for a jump, and the, the back end still is trying to straighten itself out. It was making me having to wait for it to straighten it out before I went for the jump. Guys, I have no idea how that motor is held on. I was expecting there'd be some bolts to go through here that hold it on, but there isn't. So just look on YouTube and here's a dude with a similar looking pump and it's held on with two bolts on the back of the motor. Yes, I think it's this. So here's the old motor, here's the new motor, and luckily it looks exactly the same. Uh-oh. So here we have the old tank, and here we have the new tank. So we've got extra capacity, and also, if we have a look at the chassis, the chassis is actually designed to have the tank sit on this piece here. The old tank, too short. Next, we need to get this solenoid and put it onto this motor. Wow, wow, wow. 
So it says on here ground cable, and on the chassis, we've got a grounding bolt there. On the old motor, I didn't bother grounding it, I, I forgot. And I guess it grounded through the chassis, but I think because that's there, I think we might as well make a lead. So next, we've got to fill up the hydraulic tank, then bleed the system, and then hopefully, it's gonna work. <coughs> Lovely jubbly. <coughs> All right, here we go, moment of truth. Better. Next, we got these exhaust rubbers to put onto the exhaust. Now, even though the engine is solid mounted, this here, I think, should still have a little bit of give. Boom! We have flexibility. Next, the wheels are being taken away. Next time you'll see it, it'll be on the big wheels. Oh. Next up, we've got these longer limit straps. The ones that are on there are a little bit too short, so it's limiting the full potential of these shocks. Longer straps, longer suspension travel should make it land a little bit nicer. So the old ones are 34 inches, the new ones 36. So you've got a couple of inches there, look, of extra travel. Boom! So next, we've got to get the jack under there and check out the new travel. With it fully extended, I'm expecting to see around about 27, 28 inches. They're actually 30 inch travel shocks, but you do want to limit it a little bit, otherwise there's a piston in there. If you fully max it out, you can pull it off and out of the shock. So we've got the limit straps fully tight. Please don't fall off. And we are seeing 27 and a quarter inches. Perfect. Next, we've got to make sure that it's not binding anywhere. And yep, we've got a gap here, so that's good. This end as well, yep. On the front, we actually had to give it a little bit less travel because on here, look, on full extension, it was rubbing. But now, we're looking all good. Oh, check it out. We got the wheels back with the brand new tyres. These ones here should be more resilient to car crushing. So next, we're going to put the big wheels onto the Monster, but we've run out of space. So we've got six of these tyres, so we're going to put two of them in the container. Down there we've got the BKTs, all this other stuff that you saw earlier on in the video. Got some new body panels actually from Tony, so we've got all that lot up there. So we've got to try and get those two wheels in there and then all that lot back in. Come on, be a man. <laughs> Boom, there we go. Just managed to get it all in. All the body panels, complete body and six tyres, all in a little 24 inch More spare rooms, isn't there? Next, we're gonna try and get those wheels onto that truck and fit it in this tiny little workshop here. The door isn't wide enough to get it out. So we're gonna put two wheels on outside on this side, then drive it in on two big wheels and two little wheels. That's probably gonna be sketch because it's got diff lock, so the tires are gonna hate it. And then there's not enough width in here to get the wheels on. I've worked it out, we've got about a foot to play with. You'll see, it might work, it might not. I think so. <laughs> So hopefully there's gonna be just enough room to get it in that side. Enough that side. We are 
away, and then look at that, they're pushing it. <laughs> All right, I've got, I've got to get in it, do the steering for them, but they're actually pushing it. So there you go, we've got it in, guys. Tiny bit of space on us. I'll check that out. That's just. <laughs> that went straight through the ground into me. That was next level. There we go, got it in. <laughs> yes. So my next show is in August, but I want to practice to drive it a little bit more and hopefully this time win the freestyle. So I've got this simulator for the computer. It's called Beam Drive NG or something like that and I've got a monster truck plug-in. It's even got my truck in it, and it's super realistic. So here, look, I've got another shifter that I'm gonna rig up to the simulator. Also, another rear steer handle that we can rig up to the simulator. I've got this steering wheel and pedal that I can use for now. I'm gonna set it up on this table here, big TV on the wall. So this is gonna be my practice station. So I'll be setting that up over the next few weeks, but for now I can still play on it with an Xbox controller. So just like on a real monster truck, we can do the front and rear steering independently. The simulator works perfectly on my computer, but for some reason with my screen recording software, OBS, it comes out all a little bit jerky. Anyway, let's jump into the computer and have a quick blast. So guys, this simulator is super realistic. A lot of monster truck drivers actually use it to practice how to drive. Air control is crazy realistic. So just like on an RC car, if you're jumping the car and the nose is high, you tap the brakes and the nose comes down. The same if you're in the air and the nose is low, bit of acceleration and you lift up the nose. So the simulator is Beam NG Drive. And if you want all the monster trucks and the monster truck tracks, then you need to go on a website called Sim Monsters. And I'm gonna put a link to all of that down below. So next monster truck video is gonna be in August, UK Monster Truck Nationals. I'm gonna put a link to that down below. Make sure you get your tickets. I'm gonna be there. The whole crew's gonna be there. Hopefully we're gonna win it. If there's anything else that we do in between with the monster truck, uh, then I'm gonna be filming that too. <laughs> oh my God, guys, this has been my lifelong dream. I've been wanting this since I've been a little kid. And now when I come in in the morning, I can sit here, have a cup of tea, and just admire it in its full glory. 